In this lesson, we are going to study logarithmic functions. What is a logarithmic function? The logarithmic function to the base b, denoted by this, is defined by y is equal to the logarithm of x to the base b if and only if x is equal to b raised to y, where x is greater than or equal to 0. For you to be able to understand what this means, take note that what we have over here, your b is your base, your y is your exponent, and your x here is your power. For example, 2 cubed is equal to 8. We say that 8 is the third power of when we have logarithm, it just means that we are sort of jumbling the numbers here. This is now saying that the exponent is equal to the logarithm of the power to the base. So remember this. Whenever you have something in logarithmic function, it says that the logarithm is just the exponent needed by this base in order to get the power. What's interesting is that logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses of each other. To see why that is, let us have f of x. This is equal to your exponential function b to the x and let us compute for the inverse. So this means that y equals b to the x. To solve for the inverse, let us interchange x and y. So we have x is equal to b to the y. But what is the second step? We have to solve for y. Since we want to solve for y and y appears as an exponent, we use the logarithmic function. This is the exponent. So y is equal to the logarithm of the power x to the base b, which only shows that y equals b to the x and y equals the logarithm of x to the base b are inverses of each other. If the base of your logarithm is e, we say that that is a natural logarithm and we define it by ln of x. So take note that y equals ln of x is the same as logarithm of x to the base e. It's just that we write it as ln of x. So that's why here it says here if and only if your base is e, your exponent is y, and the power is x. If the base is 10, we say that we have a common logarithm. If the base is 10, we drop the base 10 here. We just write it as log of x. Next, we will convert an expression from exponential to logarithmic form. So let us remember that whenever we have base raised to exponent equals power in logarithmic form, this means logarithm of the power to the given base is equal to exponent. This will be our guide in transforming everything to logarithmic expression. So for example here, we have logarithm of the power. Our power is 64. Our base is 4. This is equal to your exponent 3. So we have 4 raised to 3 is equal to 64. For the second example, we first write this as 2 equals cube root of 8 is 8 raised to 1 third, correct? So that we can see our exponent. So we have logarithm of the power. So that's 2. Our base is 8. And our exponent is 1 third. For the third one, logarithm of the power. Our power is 1 over 25 to the base b, which is 5, is equal to the exponent negative 2. This one, we have logarithm of our power is e to the base e is equal to 
the exponent 1. However, if the base is e, we write that as ln and then e. That's equal to 1. And lastly, we have logarithm. Our power is 1 over 1,000 to the base 10 is equal to negative 3. So again, it's very important that you have this one as your guide. In order to use this, we must make sure that we have something of this form. Base raised to exponent equals power, which means that we have to isolate our term involving the base and the exponent. So what do I mean by that? For this one, first, I want to isolate this y raised to c plus 2. So I have 2 times y raised to c plus 2. I will isolate that term and then divide it by 2. So therefore, we have y raised to c plus 2 is equal to x minus 3 all over 2. This means that what is our power? Here is my power, this is my base, and this is my exponent. So it's logarithm of x minus 3 over 2 to the base y is equal to c plus 2. For the next one, we will just employ the same method that we use in number 1. So in this case, our base of e and exponent of 4x minus 1. I will isolate this term. So how do I do that? We have e raised to 4x minus 1 is equal to 2 times y plus 1. So I already have base raised to exponent equals power. So now we can write this in logarithmic form. So we have logarithm of the power, that's 2 times y plus 1, to the base e is equal to the exponent 4x minus 1. Since this is the logarithm to the base e, we write this as ln. Then we will just copy. Next, we will convert from logarithmic to exponential form. Again, we will still make use of the following. What is our base here? Our base here is 6. Here is our exponent 1 half. And the power is square root of 6. Next. The base here is e. The exponent is negative 3. And the power is equal to b. Let us now evaluate logarithmic expressions. To find the exact value of a logarithm, we just write the logarithm in exponential form. So for example, we want to evaluate logarithm of 1 eighth to the base 2. Recall that when you are getting the logarithm, it's just the exponent needed by your base in order to get this power. I will denote this first by x. And we will now transform that to exponential form. In exponential form, our base is 2, our exponent is x, and our power is 1 eighth. How do we solve this? We have to express them using the same base. 8 is 2 cubed, but 1 over 2 cubed is the same as 2 to the negative 3. And therefore, your x is equal to negative 3. Next, we have 6 times log of 4 base 8. Let us just focus on log of 4 base 8. I will let this be equal to x first and write this in exponential form. Our base is 8 raised to the exponent x is equal to 4. Again, we express this in such a way that they have the same base. 8 is 2 cubed and 4 is 2 squared. So therefore, we have 
2 to the 3x equals 2 squared. We can now equate our exponents. We get 3x equals 2 and hence x is equal to 2 thirds. Remember that this is your log of 4 base 8. So this expression here is equal to 6 times 2 thirds and therefore it's equal to 4. For our last expression, log of 1 base 5, you can just make this a question mark. You can actually proceed without having to go through this one. You can just do it mentally. What does this mean? That is the exponent needed by 5 to get 1, correct? This means 5 raised to question mark equals 1. But what is 1? 1 is 5 raised to 0. So therefore, question mark is equal to 0. So logarithm of 1 to the base 5 is equal to 0. Here are the laws of logarithms that we will need in our next topics. It's saying that the logarithm of a product, if you want to split them up, it's equal to the sum of the logarithms. The second one says that the logarithm of a quotient is equal to the difference of the logarithm of the numerator and the logarithm of the denominator. Number three, it's saying that if you have logarithm of a number raised to an exponent, you can remove that exponent by simply putting the exponent in front and that will be the coefficient. Next, number four, logarithm of b raised to x to the base b is equal to x. It's sort of cancelled. Why is that class, that logarithm of b to the x base b is equal to x? Let's say that we do not know that value. Okay. Let's make this question mark. If you write this in exponential form, this means base raised to exponent is equal to the power, which is b raised to x. So that is the reason why question mark is equal to x. Next, b, when you raise it to an exponent, wherein the exponent is the logarithm having the same base, this will again be cancelled. You will just get x here. Why is that the case? Now, let us recall that if f of x is equal to b raised to x, your inverse is equal to log of x base b. If they are inverses of each other, that means that f, circle f inverse of x, is equal to x. This means that when we compose these two functions, we get x. Let us do that. Let us compose the two functions. f of, f inverse of x is log of x base b, and it says here that it should be equal to x. What is f of log of x base b? Look at the definition of f. f of x is equal to b raised to x. So if we have f of rectangle, this is equal to b raised to rectangle. It just so happens here that our rectangle is log of x base b. So therefore, f of log of x base b from here is b raised to log x base b, and this is equal to x. And that proves our fifth property. We use this loss of logarithms in splitting logarithms. Take note that when we are splitting logarithms, the expressions inside your logarithms become simpler. So for example, here you have mn. Now you just have m and n. So for example, we want to write the following as a sum of logarithms. We have logarithm of x times square root of x squared plus 1 to the base b. Take note that this is multiplication. 
Using the first law of logarithms, this logarithm is equal to log of x base b plus logarithm of square root of x squared plus 1 to the same base b. Take note that when we split this up into two logarithms, you connect the logarithm by plus if the operation inside is multiplication. However, we can still write square root of x squared plus 1 as x squared plus 1 raised to 1 half. And therefore, using the third property, we can now put the 1 half in front. This is 1 half log of x squared plus 1. And that is now the answer. Suppose we have ln of x squared all over x minus 1 cubed. So take note first that you have ln of a fraction. From the second property, the logarithm of a fraction is equal to logarithm of your numerator minus logarithm of your denominator. If you're in the denominator, you have a minus sign in front. So therefore, this becomes ln of the numerator, which is x squared, minus ln of the denominator, x minus 1 cubed. Again, I have exponents here, so this goes down. This is 2 ln x minus 3 ln of x minus 1. Next, let's have logarithm of this expression. Again, I have here a fraction. So therefore, this is logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. Again, my square root of x squared plus 1 can be written as x squared plus 1 raised to 1 half so that I can bring down my 1 half. Let us continue. What about this one? Can I put the 3 in front and the 4 in front? No, because remember that it says that you can only bring it in front if... Your exponent is the exponent of the entire thing here. So you still cannot put this in front because 3 is just the exponent of x, not the entire expression here. So what do we need to do? We have to split it up. This is logarithm of a product. So when we split it, it becomes logarithm of x cubed plus logarithm of x plus 1 raised to 4. And therefore, this is the only time wherein we can now put the exponents in front. So this is minus 3 log x. I'm distributing the minus as well. Minus, put 4 in front, 4 log of x plus 1. As a shortcut, what you need to remember is that whenever you have factors appearing in your numerator and in your denominator, the logarithm of the factors appearing in the denominator will always get a minus in front of it. So for example, for this one, I will write it as log of square root of x squared plus 1. And then here, minus log of x cubed minus log of x plus 1 raised to the 4. I immediately have a minus sign because these factors appear in the denominator. And then you can easily proceed from here to this one. In this example, what we did was from a single logarithm, we split it up in such a way that the expressions inside your logarithms are simpler than the original logarithms. Now, what we want to do sometimes is we are given sums or difference of logarithms and we want to combine them into a single logarithm. If that is the case, 
we will be looking at the loss of logarithms from the reverse order, meaning to say from right to left. So what is this saying? If you have a sum, in order to combine them as a single logarithm, you just get the expressions inside your logarithm and multiply them. So we are looking at it from right to left because previously we were looking at it from left and then we're going to the right hand side. For property number three, this is saying that if you have a coefficient and you want to take it out, you just bring it up and turn it into an exponent. Remember that when you are condensing a logarithmic expression into a single logarithm, make sure that you do not have any coefficient first. How do you eliminate your coefficients? If you have coefficients, you bring it up. That's log of m base b raised to r to get rid of your coefficients. So for number one, I have a coefficient of four in my second term. So therefore, I bring it up. The second term becomes log of three raised to four. Four goes up to the base a. And now we no longer have coefficient so I can now express it as a single logarithm this is logarithm of this is plus so therefore I multiply this two seven times three to the four base a take note is this equal to log of 21 raised to the fourth no you cannot multiply seven times three there and then raise it to four because of PEMDAS you're saying here that multiplication comes first before exponent. No. You need to multiply 7 to the entire 3 raised to the 4th power here, not 7 times 3. Looking at the second one, get rid of your coefficient. So this becomes ln of 8 raised to 2 thirds. Bring this up. Minus ln of 5 squared minus 1, that's just 24. What is ln of 8 raised to the 2 thirds? 8 is 2 cubed. Then when you raise it to 2 thirds, that will be ln of 2 squared, so that's just 4. Minus ln of 24. To combine as a single logarithm, we have a minus sign here. So therefore, we have ln of 4 over 24. This goes to the denominator. And therefore, that's ln of 1 sixth. Next, we have a coefficient of 2 here. So let's get rid of that. Goes up. And let us copy. And therefore, we are now ready to combine them. Everything with the plus goes to the numerator. So we have x, x squared plus 1 squared all over. This one has a minus in front, so it stays on the denominator, base a. For our last example, we have this expression. Now notice that two-thirds here doesn't have any ln beside it. So what do we need to do? We have to make sure that there is also an ln there so that we can combine it into a single expression. Whenever you have a constant, in this case, this is two-thirds times one, correct? But since we want to have an ln, we, have, we write one as ln of e. Recall that ln of e is equal to 1. For example, it's not ln. Let's say you have log base 5 here for everything. So what do you do? You write 2 thirds as 2 thirds times log of 5 base 5. We are using this property here. If this is 1, this is just 1 as well. Let me just copy it.
for our next step, get rid of all the coefficients by turning them into exponents. Take note here that 3 will become the exponent of the entire x to the 6. And we are now ready to combine. So you just get all the terms with positive coefficients. So in this case, what will we write here? For the numerator, you have x plus 1 raised to 4. What else? And this one. And then for your denominator, you get the terms with minus coefficients. So this is e to the 2 thirds and 2x squared plus 4 raised to 5.